Ooh, that's a bit of a grainy old photograph. That'll do, that'll do. Hello, chaps. Um, thought I'd show you what I've I bought over the, the weekend. We had a garage sale and someone was selling this. One of their garage sales. Um, before I start, let me say thank you everyone who says welcome back. Well, I haven't been away. <laughs> uh, I can't put out videos every week, you know. I have a life as well and uh, family and maintenance and shopping. and You know, it's not a business, it's only just a hobby and uh, I don't get paid for it or anything. Um, it's just as and when and today is a miserable wet old day and... Uh, I've just acquired this, so I'll just give you a quick waffle. And, um, you know, you may be interested. But, uh, as I say, I just do them from time to time, as as and when. Okay, this is a, a colliery or miner's lamp. And there'll be uh, some of you immediately jump up and down and say, No, it's not a miner's lamp. Well, you're technically correct, but... Uh, you know, don't let's split hairs at this stage, I'll, I'll move on. This is called the Protector. It's a lamp and lighting company limited, type uh, 1A. Uh, the makers are Eccles in Manchester. There's the label. Does it show up? Yep. Anyway, this was on a... We had a garage sale, as they say, uh, in the village. And I wandered round and I, I saw this. And these are made in their thousands and thousands, well actually millions, over a million. Um, and they were, a lot of them were sort of repo, pretend, uh, ornaments. If you go on uh, online there's uh, videos, there's explanations of these, there's websites, far more than I can tell you. Um, I'm not an authority on them. But um, if you're familiar with uh, Charles Daly, uh, Davy Lampfather, uh, Sir Humphrey Davy, and the developments that led to the safety lamp, these were used in mines and quarries. Um, and they were called the safety lamp because the flame was inside the inside the lamp and uh, wouldn't set fire to methane and cold damp and other gases that are available and also they could be used to show not only for illumination but the type of air or lack of oxygen if there was carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide or whatever um, the flame would change save the food canaries anyway the, the flame, the little wicks, it uses spirit stove, can be adjusted by this wheel by turning that you raise and lower the wick up and down as you can see. In order for combustion to take place we need oxygen and oxygen gets into the lamp otherwise we wouldn't have combustion but the flame cannot get out of the lamp and they achieve this by a large gauze. If I unscrew this a nice fine thread. I unscrew this. Inside is a gauze. And inside that gauze is another one. And if I get close to the camera, you can see how fine it is. Well, oxygen and gases can pass through this, but the flame will never migrate from one side to the other. Due to the surface area and the size of the holes, it cools the flame so no ignition can take place the other side of the and of course it's doubly safe with that. Now a true miner's lamp, colliery lamp, is very very similar, made by the same the same company. Don't get it cross threaded. That's it. Made by the same company. There we go. But all this unscrews, all this comes apart, okay? Like so. Um, and it's, it's uh, beautifully made and as I say there's millions of these <coughs> pardon me <coughs> sorry about that <coughs> have a sip 
That's it. Play on. Millions of these made, and I say a lot of them were sort of for show. But anyway, went to read this and I picked it up and immediately was struck by the weight of this thing. And I thought, well, if it's a, a repo, they wouldn't put all that brass in it. And it, it, it just, the finish just, you know, it just said it. It, 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 it sort of told me you know, that this is not a something just for show. Now, the true miners, then, in order to light this, uh, they were either lit in the lamp room or they had an igniter inside a little square. And you pulled out a little plunger, which had a, a, a uh, serrations and a, and a flint on the end, and you hit it in, and it caused a spark and lit the light. Also, within this little square, there was a, because it's all brass, there was a steel pin, a vertical steel pin, and the lamp was stood on top of a magnet and the magnet pulled the steel pin down into a hole so that the miner could not undo the the base while in in the mine it could only be done in the lamp room now this one isn't actually a, um, a, a miner's light but the principle is exactly the same as I say it struck me that it was quality there was a name I slacken that off and turn it round now I don't think the camera's going to see it because I can't see it it's just about there. There's a name on the glass if you get the position right. The a repo wouldn't go to all that trouble. Um, anyway, coming walking along with this, and I saw a friend, and he said, "Where have you bought?" And he had some one or two things. I said, oh, "I bought this." I said, "Do you think it's a, a repo for the way to that?" And he had a quick look, and he handed it back, and he says, "No, it's not a repo." He says, "But uh, did you notice know that?" And he pointed out this sign there. Can I get it? Light, right? Will it show? Yeah. BT. Can you see a T? British Telecom. Back to BT. The forerunner of which was GPO, General Post Office. And these were made for the General Post Office between 1960 and 1998. I've looked that up. And uh, they were used for checking bad air, uh, or lack of oxygen should I say, in manholes and tunnels. These would be lowered down and if the light uh, went out or dropped, they could see it wasn't safe to go inside. I find that um, quite amusing in this day and age, that, that you know, relatively recently they were still using these in this internet, electronic, digital... <laughs> times we live in, sort of Victorian principles. I like that. They're, they're still used today, believe it or not, in the Royal Dockyards, and they're used inside uh, ships' hulls, uh, submarines and the like for, for testing of uh, air quality. Um, you might find an interesting note that um, the eternal flame for the Olympic Games going back many years was carried on one of these when the flame was taken to Sydney or from London or wherever and travelled by plane it was transported on one of these I find that uh, sort of quite interesting anyway there's an awful lot that uh, you can look up on these I'm, I'm no authority I'm like so I've just uh, had a quick look bought this and found you know rather pleased with it. It cost me a fiver. So I was very pleased with that. It's, um, I say there's many, many of them made. Uh, there's clubs and people that uh, specialise in these things. As I say, I'm not, I'm not into that. But uh, I'm very pleased with my purchase. Now, what am I going to do with it? Well, a lot of people clean these up or they polish them up because they're all brass and sometimes they're stainless steel and it's a good quality machine finish so by Jove they will shine up. But this restoration, this restoring, call it what you will, in my opinion sometimes goes too far. This is what it is. This patination or 
should I say, oxidisation, is a result of this age and what it is and, and the life it's had. And but some people clean them right up and um, it's the same with furniture, it's the same with vintage cars, houses. You know, you see these vintage cars, they lift the bonnet up, you can eat your dinner off of it. Well, they, they didn't come out the factory like that. They weren't made like that. So, I think sometimes people just go too far and don't see the wood for the trees. And There's an expression called gilding the lily. So, do I want to polish this all up? No, I don't think so. I'd then have to lacquer it all. And yes, it would all shine and what have you. But uh, I think it is what it is. It, it is aesthetically pleasing to me, the engineering and the work's gone into it. It's sort of tactile and that is going to sit on my desk uh, just for what it is. I appreciate it just for what it is. Certainly worth a fiver. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little waffle. Didn't know what else to talk about. I've covered just about everything. You'll get more, but you won't get them every day, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bye for now.